life. Well, I am. Are you joining me? We'll see. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, there we go. Up there. Oops. Has a look. Okay. Wow, that's weird at that angle. <laughs> Welcome. Thanks for joining me. This is my personal scope. Hi. Thanks for being a Paddy. Um, and also appreciate this is going to be the, my own scope. This is my love scope. I do a daily love scope, a daily peri tips, which we're doing shortly. And I'm also now on two different charathons almost every day. So I'm doing four to five scopes a day. I've got a periscope challenge to do as well. So insane. Um, first of all, thank you for joining me. And feel free, please, to invite your followers, as Katia so powerfully stated in her scope she just did, and also your friends and post on Twitter, etc. And tap screen for hearts. I'm loving the hearts coming in too. This scope, again, is my love scope, which I do once a day based on my work. And in case you didn't see it when I opened up the scope, this is my book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover. You can find it on Amazon or in Kindle or physical. It's in a PDF form on my site. And it was so much fun to do the book. I should say so much fun to talk about the book because it's so many principles I can teach. I can do 50 scopes on this. Well, I'm not going to. I've done two already, but they were great ones on their own. We'll take my voice to the next level. Thank you. I appreciate that, Ian. Um, the theme that came out today was in, in reflection on some people who um, give up on their relationships or they stay longer than they're supposed to. So I'm talking about is your warranty expiring? So this is the fun part. Uh, the book, sorry. Let me plug that in. 50 Ways to Love, Love, Love You. Look by, look by name and look for my book on Amazon.com. That's where you find it. You find it on my site, you go to barrysober.com. Thank you, Katya, you're rocking probably. She's my best cheerleader out there. I love this. But I want to talk about this thing about expiry. Because I went through this myself, so I'm going to really own this. I'm doing great. Nice to have you here. Thank you so much. Thanks for inviting your followers and friends. Thank you, Danielle. Appreciate that. Wingwoman. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Yeah, there's a friend of mine, actually. She is a relationship coach, uh, mostly working with men, and her name... Her maiden name, she's got married. Her maiden name was Marnie Wing, so she was the wing woman automatically. It was so funny. Um, so, in relationship, from Leon, Mexico, wonderful. Um, and before anybody asks, I am English, but I've lived in LA for 30 years, so I've got slightly an Americanized accent. That's still going strong. So, there. The um, context of the conversation, because I'm watching these, <laughs> watching the commentary, staying on track. I watch people in relationship give up. And it's frustrating to watch because I know there's so much potential there. Now, and I'm going to do it in two parts because there's two parts, two angles on this thing about expiring relationship. One is that you stay longer than you're supposed to because you're, you're thinking you should be there when you shouldn't. The other side is that you leave because you're thinking you're bored. And it's because you turned off your own juice, your own passion. So I invite your conversation. You're an Englishman in South America. Oh, fine. Showing off now. You're doing two different languages. I'm just doing English and American. You're doing English and and either, well, if anywhere, Portuguese or Spanish. So that's cool. Um, so let me ask you, Portu oh, so Brazil, is that where you are? I'm guessing that, well, no, I think it's the only country in South America that speaks Portuguese. Yeah. I want to visit at some point. I've got friends of my, I mean, let's just say the Brazilian ladies alone are amazing, but I've heard it's an amazing country too. So, Ian, you think that Katia's got loads of charisma? You underestimate her. <laughs> She's got tons of it. <laughs> I'm sure. Anyway, back to relationship stuff for living where we live. Um, I know what well, I started, but it got pulled off track by people. I'm sorry, I'm going to get back on track. So, has your warranty expired? Meaning this. Have you given up on the love that you want? Both, have you given up the relationship that still could work for you? Or are you, <laughs> thank you for that. Or are you feeling that um, you want something better? See, the thing about this is, yeah, it is very entertaining, the side talking as well. In relationship, and I talk about it in my chapter, one of the chapters in my book, I do talk about this, about how we get bored about our partner. But the truth is, there's always, okay, I should say this. The truth is, comes out a lot in my statements. I don't know why I keep saying it, but it's not necessarily the truth, it's what I believe it to be so. So let me own that. It's not about the truth of the world. My perception is that people that are in relationships will find themselves growing bored because they've turned off something inside themselves. Often in relationships, we get comfortable. I know I did several times, and you may have done it before. Well, that's the thing. Not so much they're bored because they're boring. They're bored because they've not put enough energy into the relationship. They've been holding back. Or 
They've just simply gone, you know what, I want better, different, changing, something else. And they're not willing to do the change in the relationship, they look outside it. So the pattern of turning off that juice, that board, that become bored, is um, it's, a re it's an easy thing to get into, and particularly in the Western world, because we have been trained by our media and society to be the instant fix. We're not, we need it now, we need it now, we need it now. Relationships take time, especially if you're committed to the journey with your partner and you're both committed to the journey. I did a scope, um, I didn't say juice, no. Well, I just say juice, but not that context. No, I meant energetic, emotional, sexual, chemistry juice, that fun stuff. Pineapple juice is always fun too, but it's different quality entirely. That's the thing, they do get into routine, it's a rut. And it's like, you know, like digging a cow path, which is like, it's the same path every single day. Good morning, honey, how are you doing? Great, see you after work, bye, it's that stuff. It's not fresh. The best thing you can do for your relationship, you want to have excitement and fun. You want to inject change into your next marriage by making it open. Open's a choice. Well, yeah, I'm glad you made that joke. But the thing is, you can have an amazing relationship if you keep looking for ways to explore your own personal growth. Because the thing is, and this is the thing we talked about in other scopes. <laughs> Thank you for that, Katya. I'll be a good plug at the end. The thing with relationships are, and relationships ourselves, yeah, you did type that, didn't you? Next marriage. We are a continual evolutionary practice. Who we are is always on a journey. We don't, from, you know, from now till, the end of, till we die, we're going to change. We evolve. We grow. So does our partner. Which means if you're in a relationship, you have to ask yourself the wrong, that question, Tim. If you want some coaching, I can coach you as one of my business work skills. Yo yourself, Elizabeth. You need love, advice, bad. See, this thing is, that's why I'm here for you. Um, and I coach my clients. Okay, let me have a quick sidebar and come back to this point. Elizabeth, you're here. If you want to get more help, if you go to my profile, there's two live links there. One live, one. Okay, come on, come on, come on. Be nice here. Be nice or you're going to be out of here. Um, if you need help, on my Periscope profile, there are two links. One link is to a discovery session. The consult button, tap on that link, you get to have a consult, we can talk. The second one is a donation button, because I do take uh, tip jar donations to my next iPhone fund. <laughs> so just, you know, if you want to throw some cash that way, you can just go into the live link and you can do it there. That's okay, it's all good in the posts. So, anyway, back to this topic. And I'm, I talk about relationships being an evolutionary practice, a revolutionary experience. A re relationships are a growing opportunity opportunity. Not everyone takes the opportunity. Why not? I want the iPhone 6S Plus soon. I've got an iPhone 5 right now, or 5S, and it's, it's, it does great. Scopes work fine, but I want bigger screens so I can read it more easily while they're using glasses. Um, <laughs> anyway, the thing we have in relationship is a chance to explore someone's whole life and journey. Now, if you don't want to, you are six months awesome. Yeah, I want, I want the biggest one. Um, I have the, you know, four S is even more, that's tiny than mine. Mine's a five S. It's, it's a good phone. I loved it and I've had it for two years, but it's time for the next one because the six S plus came out and it shipped as of uh, last Friday. Staying back on track. Relationships on iPhone are limited by, by bandwidth. <laughs> that's an interesting, that's a whole other topic, but I'm talking about in, in person relationships, not over the phone both data or anything else. There's a whole, sorry, you give me ideas for a whole other scope to do another time, but I'm doing it here. I give general advice on my scopes, I give personal advice with my clients. I did two, if you want to look back at my archives, by the way, I did two or three scopes over the last few days that were Q&A scopes, live question and answer stuff, so you can ask questions, I give answers. And sometimes on the scopes, people do ask questions specific to the topic I'm talking about. Um, I'm a relationship coach, that's what I do. I'm actually the heartbreak repair specialist to my clients, working with women primarily. My friends call me the love doctor because I'm always there to support them and give them guidance and, and cues and clear and help for relationships. So that's what I do. It's my business. I am a number one best-selling author on this subject. It's my it's my thing. So yes, that's what I do. Um, again, 50 ways to love your, 50 ways to love your lover is on Amazon.com if you want to get your own copy, Kindle or physical. So your choice, your opportunity. If you need a physical doctor, I'd say call 911. If you're in California or in America, if you're in England, it's 999. Um, <laughs> you have brain cancer of your heart? Elizabeth, we should talk. I think I need to help you extract those two so you have some separate focus. So my question to you all, not just individually, I know you're having fun, is do you get bored easily? 
in your life. I'm talking about when you're single, alone if you're in, if you're in um, relationship. Well, that, well, relationship with your ex can be definitely complicated. So it depends how you do it, especially if you have family and kids involved. So, Mike, again, come back to, do you get bored easily in life? If you don't, that's a good sign you can have a healthy relationship. If you do, you might find yourself needing to do some deeper work because you may not be willing to look inside of here because if you're bored out there, it's unlikely you've turned off something inside of you. And relationships, as I said many times, starts with you. And the relationship, as I said in my scope yesterday, is it's like a, um, it's a great reflector. Your relationship's a reflector of who you are, what you're about, and what you really mean and want to be. So, thank you. Yeah, please give me hearts of hearts. <laughs> give 10 hearts for every chapter in my book. That's, I like that, it's cute. I, um, yeah, the thing is, and that, okay, so if you're bored of being single for a long time, you have more things you can do in your life that are absolutely, um, what's we're looking for? Haven't you explored yet? You can go traveling. In my book, 50 chapters. Um, if you want to have amazing relationships, you want to have an amazing life yourself. So you go travel, you do sports, you do exploring things, you have hobbies, you serve in homeless shelters, you do things that make your life better. One, you'll be more attractive because you've got a more full life spectrum to represent. And if you are meeting somebody, you've got something to explore with them because you've got more hobbies. The worst thing, I think, for relationships is when you both meet each other and go, what do you want to do? I don't know. What do you want to do? I don't know. How boring is that? So I'm passionate about people really living life fully, themselves individually, and then relationship as additionally. Because I talk about relationships being about you 100%, your partner 100%, which is 200% together, not 50-50. So your relationships, awesome, thank you. But makes makes your relationships so much more potent, more powerful, and more additive. That, for me, rocks, and so I'm very passionate about this work. Well, Elizabeth, um, so yes, it's good to have your own life and li your life together. And life, sorry, yes, you, I was thinking you said something else. Yes, it's true. It's important to have your own life working and then your partnership life working together as well. They're both good and they're added to each other. One does not replace the other, which some people think, when I get my relationship, I'll be fine. No, you know, I'm just moving this a bit more so I get more light. I need to be in a bit of shadow there. Yeah, all right. The sunshine's right here, so it's like, you see like the... Uh, Oh, there, lots of sunlight, so it's just distracting my camera. Okay. Distracting myself there. A trip to Paris would clear the would mind. Yeah, that wouldn't be bad. Yeah. So that's back to the point again. It seems like your ex can't make up his mind if he wants a friendship or not. He's inconsistent. Well, the question comes back to this. What do you want? If you want to wait for him to sort that out, great. If you don't, keep moving. You'll set up a phone on Perry. <laughs> well, the thing, and just uh, sorry, just sidebar to that point just quickly in a moment. Um, I just took, pay, I went up, set up a donate button on PayPal, and they made a short, a bit link, a bitly link, and put that into my profile. That's how. Oh, Perry's fun. This smart woman. I like it. So, come back to the question with your ex-husband. What is it you really want? If he's not sure if he'll be friends or not, do you care? Do you have an investment? Do you want something from him? Well, it's, it's, it's a plan, I guess it's a plan, I don't know, it's comfortable. It's a thinner material because it's really hot still in LA, it's in the high 80s again. And I'm like, I'm really done with this summer, it's not fun anymore. It's gone way overdone. Hi Daniel, nice to have you here. Who, who's who asking what? Okay, this, this is the challenge, okay, this is the challenge with Periscope. There is about a 10, 15 second delay from when you type comments to when the person scoping sees them. Okay, we talk, but yeah, I want a friendship. But as I said, he doesn't seem to know for sure. But the ex-husband, so my question for you then is this. That was who was, up, who was responding to. Sorry, now you know Elizabeth. If, I'm not sure if you have kids or not, which may be another, that's all another conversation, but if you are one person and you're the other person goes separate ways, you don't have anything in common, it's okay to walk away, you know? So, okay, no kids. So do you want that friendship with him or do you not care? If you don't care, I should say, let me ask this. If you want friendship with him, then it requires an investment on both parts. If you're more focused on yourself for love, maybe for six months. Okay, I've got two people in parallel. It's like, I think, Elizabeth, six months, and the other one was Renee, I think it was. So, and this is the thing, actually, a friend of mine talked to recently. He realized that his relationship that he's now rebuilding 
was caught up because he didn't have friendship first. And now he and his ex are making friends and they may get, may get into a relationship again because they've been in friendship now, which is healthy. No, you do not want to beg him for that. That's Andrea. Okay, so no, you do not have to, you do not want to beg him for anything because it's for you. You stay in your truth, you stay in your heart, you get what you want. If he shows up in friendship, awesome. If he doesn't, that's his choice. And now you're no longer apart, you can let go of that. Because what you want is for you to be happy, I hope. And that also may include a further relationship down the road with somebody else, if that's what you want. And if that's so, you're on the right path. Because self-love is where it begins. And that's what I talk about in my book, again, quick plug for that, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, it's on Amazon. Uh, one of the principles I talk about that is you've got to have self-love first. Food helps. Well, it depends what you use it for. And not be friends with your ex. Yeah, and that's the thing. Um, some relationships, when they're over, are meant to be over completely. So what I'm telling you here is, will the book, will the book will help you with somewhat, but if you've got some deeper stuff, coaching would be much more effective, to be honest. My book's got 50 principles, but each principle is only like three or four pages, four or five pages. They give you thoughts about stuff, make you think about things differently. But if you're working through some deeper stuff, this is not therapy or coaching or counseling. It's a reference book. So, okay, Elizabeth, here's my feedback. Tinder, same as anything else, is a doorway to meet people. But Tinder isn't the solution. It's a tool. Favorite chapter to read on the plane. It's in Paris, there you go. <laughs> so, so, Elizabeth, we need to talk. I get that clearly because what you what your work is on right now is in here, not out there. Tinder's out there. You're in here, and that's your work. Yeah, um, and I've talked about this before about Match.com, Tinder, all these different apps. The challenge with those is, first of all, they're designed for men, not for women. Ooh, that's gonna wake some people up because it's designed to be a visual sorting system, which is a male practice. We look and choose by that fast in our minds. For women, don't. Do it that way. Do it by connection. It's heart-based. And that's what it's about, is you need to find what attracts your heart and keeps you focused so you can attract. Glad you like it. Um, so then you become a magnet for what you want. Because truly, a man will be drawn to you when he finds you attractive. And it's not about necessarily your looks. It's about how he feels you. But you've got to really work with him on that. You cried today. I'm hoping that that was a healthy cry, releasing and opening up. Again, if you're in pain and hurt about love, I can help you with that. That's my work, that's what I do. My, my, my title is the Heartbreak Repair Specialist, so I do that. Um, and sorry, I'm just watching the clock, because I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm putting my, I'm, I've got two periscopes to do every day, and this is one of them. Thank you, I'm glad you, I'm glad you, I hope you'll enjoy it. I know you'll enjoy it. Um, again, back to the scopes. I do a love scope every day, and I do a, a peri-tip scope, which we'll be doing later. You're welcome, Elizabeth, glad to help. I will need to get off in about five minutes because I'm part of another um, past the cast scope at, at 2 p.m. Pacific time. Um, I can, if you're getting an Amazon, only if you meet me somewhere, I don't know if you, you said you're in Canada, I think you said. Um, if you look like a sign for I'm in Los Angeles. If you ever come to one of my events, when I do events again, which I'm not doing for a while, I'll sign it there. Um, but when it's mailed from, from, from Amazon, no, I can't sign it because it comes from them, not from me. You're in Louisville, Louisville, okay. At least you're in the same continent. <laughs> and at some point in time, we'll, we'll cross paths, maybe. Um, I am probably going to start doing more events. I do have a call to speak in conferences now, which is getting me out of my comfort zone hugely to really speak to women from the place of the divine masculine, invo inviting and, and encouraging the divine feminine, which is another conversation. Um, okay, so I'm going to do more scopes. This is my, I'm in my 60th, 70th scope now. I've done a lot of scopes over the last few, couple of months. So this topic, I've done a lot of coverage on, on love and relationships as well, because most of those have been love scopes. If you want to watch the archives, they're all under catch.me, which is, yeah, so you just found me. So now you can stay tuned, make sure you follow me on Periscope. If you go to catch.me, K-A-T-C-H dot M-E forward slash my name, which is Barry Selby, catch.me is interesting. Catch.me forward slash Barry Selby is where all my scopes are archived. And if you start doing Periscope uh, broadcast yourself, you'll want to use that because it's a free service that saves all your Periscopes. So 
Look for the ones that say love scope in them. They're the ones about relationships. And I also have about 20, 25 peri tips as well for learning how to use periscope. All right? You're welcome. Oh, that's somebody else. <laughs> you're very welcome. Um, Ian, you're just, are you just going all about Paris and on this scope? <laughs> oh, boy. You haven't seen anybody doing any but romances budding on my scopes yet, but who knows what could happen down the road. I'm not doing matchmaking here. <laughs> all right. Um, yeah, I've got a couple minutes. Any, any questions or thoughts on what I said? I didn't, I didn't get to talk about a lot of what I was going to talk about because a lot of Q&A came out of the scope, uh, the comments. So any other questions, any other thoughts you have right now before I sign off? I'm going to make sure I offer you some support before I get going on the next one. Yeah, Periscope, the new Tinder. Well, the thing about Periscope is one person can see the other person live, in person, real, versus a picture. There's only one way, not two ways. So, you know, that's all right, and I'll let you go this time. Next time, don't do that, though. <laughs> Any advice when you're really sad about someone hurting you? Um, yeah, you need to love yourself. If someone hurts you, it's out of their lack, not yours. First of all, so it's them, not you. If you keep yourself back in the situation, like how to quickly get out of it, here's the keys. One, remember it's not you, it's them. Two, look in the mirror and tell yourself you love you and keep saying it until you feel it shift because it's part of the journey. Right, so here's your homework, Elizabeth. Your practice for the next week or longer is you spend five minutes a day in the morning and five, days in the, five minutes a day in the evening at least looking in the mirror in your own eyes, saying I love you to yourself continuously and, and feel yourself connecting here through your eyes in the mirror and keep doing that until you feel it. You should take, you should say at least give it five minutes so you feel a connection because that's gonna stop the hurting from outside making any difference in your life because hurting is coming from somebody else. Yes, exactly. That's, that's your free homework advice. <laughs> It's something everyone should do, basically. I recommend it highly because it's something you can do. So, all right, I'm going to get off the scope now because I'm going to do some other things, okay? I'll see you soon. You take care of yourselves. Bye. Sorry, I'll be back on soon, though.